I'm live. Everybody has started watching right now. Okay, so I think I should start. Can you hear me well? if you can hear me or not okay so the idea of today's stream is to create a dynamic twitter header that will um, update with my fitbit data very frequently i am thinking about updating it every five minutes or so let me create a new folder for the project I will mostly write it in Python because that's what I'm comfortable with for this project. Who's starting? I will create a tasks file where I will write what I'm planning to do and I will refer to it frequently throughout the live stream. Okay, so I should increase the volume a little bit. Uh, okay, is this fine now? Let's see. So, since we are going to be using the Fitbit API, the first task will be to authenticate with this. Authenticate and the second task will be to fetch the data from it. And that's then you will start working on the Python side of the code which will generate the image. So, below mm, image generation, and after the image is generated, we will try and upload it to the Twitter API. Data. For the Twitter API, I'm thinking about fetching some of the data like mm, the latest followers. I think latest three followers followers will be okay, and displaying that somewhere in the header. Mm, so I think we should start. I will be using a private <laughs> window for this. I don't want anything private to you know display on the live stream. Let's see what the Fitbit API looks like. So you'll start with the authorization code. So the Fitbit API uses the OWASP 2 protocol to authenticate. It has these four, five, six things that we need to, to get. First of all, you need to create the client credentials, I think. Let's see. Hmm. We'll start by creating an app for Fitbit. I need to log in. Let me lower my screen for this. I don't want you seeing. Register log. Let me quickly log in to Fitbit and then we will continue creating that. Uh, 
I am using OBS Studio right now. Okay, so I am inside Fitbit, as you can see. So we will name it Twitter. So you can blur specific part of the screen. Well, I will look into it. Right now, I have created a separate scene for that that blurs my monitor. Data application website you have since it will won't have an application website will add my own organization website to work this will work server client or personal I think client should work I'm not sure it, what is the best Application design localization. Mm, I don't think it has anything written about what application type I should use. Intraday data client privacy controls token. Okay, the basically client client secret. Okay. Mm, I don't think there's anything written about it anywhere. Well, I don't know. I don't think it's a client app because uh, I won't be using it as a client. So I think I'll select server and let's see if I face any issues. Hopefully, we can edit later on. Default access of just read only. We don't need to write anything. I have agreed as a subscriber. Uh, no, register. Cannot contain fit to I don't. I think I think I clear it again so that you don't get to see the client ID and okay. I'll reset it once again so you don't. So it doesn't get leaked. Is it client ID? Remove client ID. Okay, so I have the client ID and client secret. I will create an env file where I will store these things. Client ID and client secret. So I'll copy the client ID and client secret and put it in a env file that we will use in the code. Okay, so I have created this env file here that contains all the secrets that will create throughout the project. I think we start writing the code. Let's see, I need to create a new virtual env. We have got six viewers right now. Not sure if I know any one of them or not. Mm, okay. I in V. We should we can select one from here as well somewhere. Okay. So once I'm in main.py I should have an option to select the virtual environment. Okay. To create a new shell, it should be in that virtual network. So now, first of all, I don't think I think we'll create a separate file for the Fitbit part of the code so that it remains organized. Okay, so um, what do we need to do first? We will need to fetch the environment variables from the file. 
There's a library called load.env. Hopefully I've got it. Okay. Python.env will allow me to fetch the credentials from the .env file. Okay. So by default load dot this function by default uses the dot env file, but you have named something else. You can pass it into this function as an argument. Okay. To use those environment values, you use the OS library. The client ID will be OS dot get env. Client ID. Client state ID. The OS dot get env okay. now we need to look into how to authorize the client initiate the uh, this also does not support retain can be the data non python version python programming <laughs> may i know your terminal is beautiful may i know how you did this so i'm using manjaro slash arch whatever you want to call it and I think the name of the terminal is urxvt. Are you talking about the main terminal or the one in the Visual Studio Code? Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to authorize first of all. Let's see. That changes uh, in this authorization. So this is the URL that we need to call and we need to pass in client ID and response. Type for it. Okay, authorized client ID. We have that response type. Type code for authorization complete. Okay, so we use a writing some code. But I'll create a class called fit API so that I can call it later. And let's get a function that we call authorize. We will need the request library for this. So, the URL is if I'm not wrong, I will need to click on the URL that is generated and in the browser and then authenticate authenticate it from this. So most likely we need to print it, but let's create the URL first. In VS Code. I think it fetches my settings from my main terminal. Uh, there's a file called .x resources or something in Linux that contains all the mm, settings for the terminal. And I'm using what is known as ZSH for my shell. And there's a package called oh my ZSH that helps with this. I think I'll share a link with you later on. Message me on Discord. Hey, some, uh, hey Josh, how are you? Remind me later in my Discord and I'll send you a link about this. Okay, so what are we doing? Okay, we, we I think I will need to print this URL later on. So, alright, so first of all, we need to add a client ID. ID is equal to we have stored a client ID in this one. So, string here. So, client ID, then we need response type and response. Type is equal to code, I think. Scope, 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 oh, scope. What scope do we need? Mm. I think we'll need to look into scope somewhere. Oh, scopes. Also, is a kind of activity data. Okay. Heart rate, location, nutrition. Oxygen session, respiratory settings, sleep, social, temperature, weight. So I think for now you'll just use the activity scope and see if you need anything else later on. And scope is equal to activity. I think this should work. Redirect URI. Unless required, unless only one redirect URI has been specified in the application setting. I don't think I have specified. Any since it's not required, we'll skip it for now. 
expires in prompt eight. State recommended for code challenge, code challenge method for using PKC only. I need to look into what PKC is. Examples. I think there should be some easier method as well. I don't want to get into PKC because if I'm not wrong, there's lots of encryption and other stuff. Ideally, I will use some sort of method that won't need me to, you know, authenticate again and again. I will look into it. Let's see. So here's a concept that calls refresh token and what we refresh token does is okay hey how's it doing okay yeah okay. so yeah the, what a refresh token does is it allows me to fetch new access tokens whenever you want so ideally i will create a method that will give me an access token and a refresh token and whenever it needs a new access token it will use the refresh token to fetch a new one so let's see if there's anything on how to get a refresh token first we are using the endpoint or over to authorize so uh, exchange the authorization code for the initial access token and refresh token okay go off to token okay. i think we skipped some steps here mm. i think there should be a way to directly use client secret PKC, yes, PKC uses it. Yes, I'm familiar with it and I don't want to use it for this project because it will make it complicated for no reason. Let me see if there's a way to use the client secret directly. Revoke open. Because since it says it's optional, so I think there will be a way to use it without PKC. I just need to find it somewhere. Client. What does client secret mean? Client secret is a special string that is given to me by Fitbit. I have stored that in .env file. I can, I should be able to use it to authenticate without, you know, going through any sort of encryption. I don't think there's anything here, but let's. I have a hunch that this this might work. And client underscore secret. There's a way for access token. Mm, if you know if any way to use the client secret, I think this should work. So I think I will need to click on the generated URL and fetch some sort of code from there. I used OAuth two before in other projects. So initially we found it okay and response. Oh, the author needs to be exchanged. Okay, so we'll get the authorization code from here. Okay. So let's see what happens if I click on this one. We'll be running this directly. So it and F is equal to fit with API app dot surprise. Let's see what happens if I run this Python fit with the file. There is no module name request. Okay. I thought request was a D came with Python, but no. Take zero but one was given. Okay. So we have this URL here. Copy paste it. Disable third party login through. Okay, so I am able to log in. Log on. That's good. Check Discord. I have my Discord open somewhere. Okay, I see a message. Other supported authorization closed. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. Let me see. Open. 
implicit only server application types may omit okay so we have the server application so we can omit pkc that means that the client secret must be used in operating access and so we have used the client secret i think yes okay implicit grant flow i don't think we need to use that so okay so this is my website and i think we got the code from here i think this is the code this is a, uh, i think this is the code what do we do with it Okay, does not support it. Oh, token exchange is the authorization. Exchange is the authorization for the initial access token and refresh token. Okay, so we need to look at oh, this. token code. Okay, so we have the code. Grant type authorization code. Okay, client ID. Okay, I think we we'll again need to pass the client secret somewhere. Okay, so, um, okay, so request authorization required. Okay, in the header, we need to pass in the client ID and client. Secret. Hmm. Okay. That's the token type. For example, the okay. So we need to encode it in base sixty-four. Base So what we need to do is client IDs go to client secret. So. Authorization string is equal to client ID colon client secret. I have done this in JS for someone. Okay, that's nice. So we have the authorization string, but we need to encode it. Encode it. String will be equal to Page sixty four or page sixty four code readable buffer authorization string, but this is a string and need it means a readable buffer. So we need code in Unicode UTF dash eight. Okay, so this should give us the encoded string. And if we pass this encoded string to the request, that should work. But if let me check the return type of base 64 encode returns byte. So we'll need to re encode it. String. Mm. Maybe this will work. So where is the URL? Let me know. R is equal to request. Okay. Not post this, okay. Post. We need to post this and we need pass body parameters are these. Body parameter code. Okay, so we need to get the code as well. So authorization code we'll paste the authorization code in the terminal that we can later on use in this request. Not code is equal to auth code, okay. Grant type. Grant type will be authorization code. Grant type will be equal to authorization code and client ID is equal to. So we need to recommend your okay, state expires in deep supported 2800. Okay, this is optional. Code verify we are not using PKC. So now the headers. That is the, there's only one required authorization. Authorization is going to type basic, basic, and then the encoded string. Hopefully, this will work. So, examples response. So, response will have our access token and our refresh token so is equal to R. and i think 
returning it will be the best return data address open and data refresh and comment your code is over right now okay so hopefully this will work okay so yes it's taking the input copy allow all the you know, so okay so this is the code that we need to copy and paste here key error access token so this did not work okay let's debug this and see what the issue is response 400 okay bad request field or request to invalid domain so i'm using the wrong url but this was the url it was like for two like two. oh it's api dot fit bit dot com okay Oh. oh, I think you can see my client secret there. I need to change it again after I'm done with this authentication stuff. Mm, it's not loading. So what happened to my internet? Hopefully the stream is working. And the next speed is fine. Didn't work again. So uh, hopefully I'm able to solve this quickly. I don't want to spend all my time on. Don't to spend all my time on authentication. This is the idea. Again, the response 400 bad request invalid request. Bad request content expecting application the URL link could visit. Success solves my content hmm. Is this something? Let's see. Content type or something. Let's see if adding a content type better works. Content type is equal to it said something with the form URL encoded one. So I think that is really uh, it says needs here it says it needs application JSON. The media type of the response content the client is expecting. Let me see if this works. Okay, it didn't work again. Copy value. So it needs this as a content type. Okay. We'll use this and try again. and it worked okay so i got a response 200 and yes it will return the data action refresh token so i don't think there's any error in this so now we have the access token and the refresh token what do we need to do next so if we have the access token and the refresh token um, operating a new access when the access has expired so the refresh token can expire but when will it expire? Okay. The rate uh, short lived. 
if it, if it may be wrong, I think that's why until it is used. So it's used once. So we'll store the access token and the trace token somewhere in a file, I think, and use it from this. So to store the trace token and the X token, we'll create some functions. Let's see. Define store tokens and set. It will store the two tokens we have access token. Use ENV. Yeah, I can. I don't know if you write to the dot ENV file. I can write to the dot ENV file, but um, I don't want to overwrite it completely. If I start appending to it, it will create multiple entries for the access and refresh token. But using ENV is a good idea. Hmm. I can. I don't know if because I want to persist the access token across multiple sessions because I'm I'll be rerunning it again and again. So using ENV, maybe. Hmm, can I? I don't know if I can modify the dot ENV file without any issues. Let's JSON for now and then we can change it later on if I'm able to think about it properly. Yes, so we don't need to. So JSON, how to write to JSON. So it will be simply JSON dot dump. Uh, okay, we will need access token. It should be access. And refresh token, which will be the refresh argument. And I think we need to the file pointer to we need to open the file. Uh, let's call it tokens dot json, and we'll overwrite every time. So this will store tokens. So we have got a method to store the tokens. Now I need a method to as the token get tokens then so it will return a tuple or an array with the access and the refresh token so okay but i need what if there are no tokens present so we will need to do the authorize method again so when it's authorizing let's save these tokens first here so token Mm. And store the tokens here now and then during fetching if the tokens are not present we will run the authorize method check discord where did my discord go use expires to make token work for longer time no that is fine but i am planning on running it for not forever, but for a long, long time, I don't want to, you know, have to change it again and again. By using a refresh token, I think it should be able to do it automatically without any interference from my side. Get token. So, if the tokens are not present, we will return the... We will use the authorized method if the tokens are not present. So data is equal to JSON dot load open open dot JSON and we need to read it. Now if we have opened this, we will have to return data access token and data refresh. And accept. if this does not work, we will return the authorize self not authorized. So what this should hopefully do, if there are no tokens present in the tokens or JSON, or if the file itself is not present, it will use the authorize method, and we will need to authenticate and it will store the tokens for our future use. Now we have got the authorize function. I think we are still missing something. We are authenticating, we are getting the access token, refresh token. Okay, so I think we need a method that will use the refresh token to fetch a new access token as well. 
Let's play down here. Fetch. Need a method to fetch the token so that we are able to fetch the tokens when the access token does not work. So let's see what the method to fetch token is. Refresh token. So it is the same endpoint. Just back after having dinner. Okay. Enjoy your dinner. Grant type supported refresh token. Okay, refresh token required. Okay, expires in. I can use that. Authorization. Okay, it's very similar to the authorized function, but there are some slight differences. Okay. I think I will use the same method here. Request for token code. Okay. I don't have an auth code here. I instead have a refresh token. I'm storing the request open anywhere. Okay. Hmm. I think I should store these tokens somewhere. Okay, let's create an init function that will initialize with the token. So we'll create self dot access token and self dot refresh that will use the get tokens method to get the token. So we will have access to the access token and token everywhere in the object. So we have got get token. We have got refresh token self dot refresh token to pay. We have the refresh token. What else do we grant type is refresh token? Client ID will remain the same. I don't, we don't have to encode its string. So we'll copy these two lines. Now we should have the encoded string as well. And we have got the uh, okay, so I think this should work. If we return the access token and the fetch token again, so we will use this. It's very similar to the authorized method, but with slight differences. Any session where I can thoroughly learn Python, you should check YouTube. There are many good tutorials. I prefer Mosham Dani myself. Okay, so this will refresh the tokens. Do we need to do anything else? We have got the storing the token and returning it again. Mm, I think this is fine for our authorization. We we'll need to check whether the authorization works perfectly or not. So I don't think we need this now because when the object is there, it will run the get tokens and get tokens in turn will run the authorized method. So, if I run this for the first time, it will ask me to. I will need to log in once again. But hopefully, this is the last time I need to do this. Okay, I got the code. Hmm, I don't think so. And now if I run this again, it won't ask me. Yes, so I think this is working because now it's fetching the tokens from the JSON file. I think I can safely reset the environment variables. Let me blur the screen for a minute and I will reset my tokens first of all because I don't want them to create any issues later on. Mm, where are my app? And uh,
So I will reset the client secret because I think it has been leaked. Okay. And I think I will need to authenticate once again, maybe. I will authenticate once again and then we should be good to move forward. Perfect. Okay, so I I accidentally leaked again. I reset it once more. I think we should be good to go now. Mm, so I think the authorization and authentication is working. Is this how we do it? Uh, I think I've forgotten how to strike through in Markdown. It has been a while. Let's leave it now. Let's focus on fetching the data. So oh, I think all of this is working. Now let's focus on fetching the activity data that we need. So get daily activities something. Let's start from that to see what we can get what are daily activities. Get today's this user ID. Also here's an example user okay we use dash i think that should work for the logged in account so i think this is the url that we need to use and do we i mean we still have four viewers so how do we authenticate here so content type is this i think they need i need to pass some Okay, so I need to pass the X token. So I will create a wrapper function that will return this okay. URL. But I will wrap the headers because I don't want to write them again and again. Mm, authorization is right, is it being there? And self access token for the work. But what if it's expired? I need to check for that. Oh, this is to get it. Uh, dot status code is equal to 200. I return R. I'm just writing down. Else, mm, else we need to refresh our tokens first. Self dot refresh. I can create this self refresh token and once the tokens are refreshed I will call the function again get data store tokens work so this wrapper function will help me call all the Fitbit API endpoints without writing the headers again and again we need to write anything else no I think this should work I think this should work okay so let's try define get today's data this function will fetch data for today's daily activity summary. So here is the endpoint. Yeah. 
So we'll be using this endpoint to get the data. Instead of user ID, we will write dash, so it will use the authenticated user. And instead of date, so date, what is the format of the date we need to use? Okay, year, month, day. We'll need to use Python's date time library to get today's date for it. From date time info, date time as dt. It's format will be simply percent y dash percent and dash percent t I think yes. so I need to use double quotes here so it will work perfectly so this URL should get me the data I need so the request will be r is equal to get data from this URL and the contents of the uh, let's see if the data is equal to Let's print that data. Dot get today's. Let's see if this works. Mm, okay, so this is working. Now I need to filter the data to get what I need. Mm, so it has got lots of stuff. What I'm looking for is my daily steps. Uh, the daily distance I've covered and maybe the calories as well. So I think what we have is activities. I don't need the activities right now, but maybe later. Goals. No, I don't need to display my goals. Summary. A yes, summary is what I need. Summary. Active scope. Active calories. Calories. Total BMK burn for the day. Okay, so this is something I will need. Mm. I return calories stored in data summary calories BMR mm. BMR and calories out these two look same what to, I don't know what's the difference but I think calories out will be better but sound I don't know what BMR is out if you know what bmr and out is please tell me we have got calories now we need steps okay distances let's do distance first distance supported activity name total travel or distance i need to debug this once that i know what i'm working with so the data has got activities goals and summary in summary, we have got calories BMR and calories out. Hmm. So today, KKLs, which was minus 2666. I'll keep it calories out for now and later on. I'll see if I need to change it. In distances, we have got the first one is total. So, yeah, so I need the first one and the distance of key from it. Distance is equal to data summary distances. Distance is the first object and the key distance from it. Did I get an S distance and the first one in the activity? Okay, so this will give me the distance and now I need steps. So I the steps on the item 518. So now we have got the steps data summary. I think this should work. Let's print this out. Okay, so I got the call calories, distance, and the steps. So this is working. Now we have got the initial data that we need to use. Okay, so we have got some data. So the authentication is working as well. We have got five viewers. If they want, they can comment and we can talk about whatever they need to talk about. So we have got get today's data. So my plan was to show today's data and some other data as well. Let's see if I can get lifetime best. Okay, so here I'll get lifetime stats. 
okay similar it's very the url similar to the one we just used so it will give me the best total distance best total steps okay best total distance date as well okay steps there are steps in lifetime okay so i can get the best and the lifetime from this endpoint so okay i think we, i'm going to use this to get the lifetime stat get lifetime this code will be similar as i just need to change the endpoint user slash run the user activities dot json okay, so this should get me the data now i need to see what data do i need to okay so i will get the best steps best distance I don't think I need calories for this. Okay, so I have calories as well. So I think I will fetch the calories as well. Let's see if we will use it later on. So there are two parts: the best and lifetime. So let's create the best first. Okay, so best steps is data, data, and then the best total. I think it's total. Steps. This should work. Maybe distance will be the same. Best total distance. This date and this value. Hmm. Let's fetch both of them right now, and then we can later on use them separately. Calories. So calories, calories out. Best calories. So I don't think we have calories out in best. Only in lifetime. So I think I won't use calories in this lifetime. lifetime. Data. Lifetime. Total steps and total distance. Really, I don't. I think this will work as well. I've get like this comment this line out and see if this works. Okay, so there was no error. That's good. Best steps date twelfth August. Okay, yes. Distance twelfth August value. This August okay, so gives me the date as well. Lifetime steps, lifetime distance. So we have got. A lot of data now let's see what else i can get from this activities get get get, get all of you get daily active summary get frequent activity get recent activity types get all get daily activity. let's see if i can fetch the latest activities as well from somewhere activity get activity log list activity so really in this even though i don't know by some yet oh, thanks and get activities use this I'll use this again but the endpoint goal activities that list or this and then we have got the data now what is the format of the data Mm, it is fonts activity school active zone minutes activities activity i think activities will be a list but let's check it first paint f dot get activity let's see what the format of the data is um, But for some reason, let's restart it. Okay, so it's not working for some reason. URL is fine. Data, data, data. Oops. 
Okay, so URL is being called and that has stopped working again. Maybe. I think the net has stopped working for some reason. Hopefully the stream is working. This is weird. I have done anything that will cause so much error. Stream is so maybe I messed up somewhere. I don't think I did. Hmm. So I'm okay. So this is where I'm getting stuck. Okay, if I think the URL is wrong. There is something wrong with the code as well. Let's Let's figure it out later. Boy, slash one slash user slash that okay slash activity slash list of this. It's still not working. This is where it's getting stuck. Get data. What is the error type validation thing before date or after? Okay, so we need a before or after date. So yes, I forgot about this. So I think what we'll use is today's date. And then figure it out. It works. So before date will be today's date. It is a little bt right now. Dot str at time. Set of y dash plus n dash plus n d. Okay, before date. Another before date. And then we need after date. Okay, so we need one of these. Either before or okay. Sort. So we'll sort descending. So we need a latest. Oh, latest limit as well. So we need the latest three, I think. Limit is equal to zero offset. I don't think we need to offset it. But since it's required, offset is equal to zero. Hopefully this works now. Okay, so it worked. Now I have the data. Yes, so activities is a list. And I got three activities. These should be my latest three activities. So each activity has an active duration. Uh, so that means the time I spent in the activity, I will use this. And activity name, I will need this as well. So calories, okay. So there's duration, there is calories, there's name. If there's anything else that I can use, okay. And there's start time and there is steps. Hmm. So if it's walk, I can but so I let's see if I have any other if there's another walk. There's another walk. Let's see if I have anything related to running or cycling and see if it has the steps count as well or not. Ask it is ten. Because we don't know. Right now it's three walks, but maybe tomorrow it will be running or something. Let's see if that has okay walk run. So for the run does not have run has steps as well. Okay, that's nice. I can use steps as well. Uh walk bike. Bike won't have steps if I am correct. Yes, bike does not have steps, but bike has distance. Mm, the walk does not have distance. Okay. Let's use the basic stuff right now. 
which is common to everyone there's name that is common to everyone okay but this is an array how will so we will return an array of data for activity in activity data activities so for each activity we will return the name name will be activity name or there will be galleries which will be activity galleries duration activity duration and there was start time as well start time activity so for each activity we return these four things so let's test it out for key activity name is not a key so what was it called hmm. name 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 it's called activity name okay so this worked we have got the name the calorie is the duration and start time for each of the activity we will fetch only three now we don't need ten so we have got the fitbit data for everything now i think we'll start working on the image part of this because now we have got the fitbit data we can use it however we like now we'll start working on the image so for the image let me see if I can log into Figma. Figma is connected to my Google. Let me blur it out for a second. Hopefully, I don't leak anything private. Authenticated. Okay. So I will create a new file. And I think now you can see this. So we'll create a new figma design so that we can at least create a demo of how it should look so here's a tutor header template i have already downloaded an image for the background let me show it to you okay. so this is the image that I'm thinking about using. I don't think I can copy paste it directly here. Let me try dragging it in. Okay, so we have got the image here. So let's see how I want it to head it to look like. I think something like this would be good enough. So why I use Pegma was because I will need this data initially to create the image. Okay, so let's get into it. I'll get a separate file for creating the image. image. And to create the image, we'll need a Python library called Pillow. Install Pillow. So we have got Pillow installed from PRL image. I think image draw is also something that we we'll need. So let's call this class we can't call it image image generator so in the constructor of this class i will load the image into some variables and we'll work from there so for the header to work the size of size needs to be defined by 500 so we'll create an image that is 1500 by 500 in size mode will be rgb you can get a python course well this is my first stream 
<laughs> let's see how it goes maybe in the future someday and we need to pass in 1500 by 500 as the size of the image so we have got the image and there's another variable called draw that we'll use that will help us draw on the image image draw dot draw and we need to pass the self dot image so this draw value will help us draw the text and various stuff on the image now let's create another function that will add the background to the image to add the background we need to open it first so the bg will be self image dot open uh, I've named it bg.jpg so I will load it from here bg.jpg and since I think I resize the image a bit so I will need to resize it here as well so bg will be equal to back bg.resize I resized it to um, 3087 by 2315 so this is a new size of the image now I need to paste it on the image. Dot image dot paste. BG is the image that has to be pasted and where. So the where is I will pass these two variables in the where so that it will align itself correctly. Minus 152 and minus 1121. So this will add the background and since we need the background to always be there, I will call it in the construct itself. Okay, now we need to save the image as well. Let's create a function called save. Saving the image is very simple. Self dot image dot save. Let's call it out dot jpg. Hello. Yes, I can see your commit epic. Let's check the Discord as well. You have sent some message in Discord as well. Uh, you can create a Python course. Yes, maybe in the future. Not right now. So, name is equal to name. You will create a is equal to image generated. This will load the image and apply the background, and we will. Save it as well. Okay. Let's major file. Okay, so outdoor JPG was created. Okay, good. So it created our Twitter header that we needed. Now what we need to do is write the text wherever we want. So we have got the data from the API that we will use to create the image. Okay. Okay, so I think how should we do it? So I will use the main dot five file as the driver file, which will call both the Fitbit API and the image file that we created to generate the image. So Fitbit is equal to Fitbit API and image generator. Okay, so data will be so first of all uh, we are let's work on the today's data first we have got three kinds of data and we will write a i think somewhere here in the top corner so get in the right today's data and we'll need the data so now how should we proceed mm -hmm. let me think about it so we will get today's data and in today's data we have calories distance and steps that only one line what if we have steps distance steps distance again so i think i will create three rows of data the first one will be calories distance for today then the best and then the lifetime okay so so i'll probably write stats because 
I'm going to write all the stats in one function only. We'll have today's data and it will have the best data and the lifetime data as well. Okay. To write text on the image, there's a function called draw text or something like that. I will create a wrapper around it. So that I don't need to pass some arguments again and again. So it's called self dot draw dot text, I suppose. Yes. So it needs an x, y. Okay, what else does it need? It needs a text. Okay. And it needs font. No, fill. So like for now, this fill. I will give a default fill to white. So we don't need to pass it again and again. Fill is equal to fill. Then there is font. I don't have, I haven't written any font code yet. But I will, in a moment, what else does it mean? Font anchor. Let's define stuff first. Spacing, I don't think I will use spacing. Alignment, I will use. And is there anything in direction? No language. I don't think there's anything else that I need to use. Okay, so the anchor, the default anchor will be mm, which is the central anchor. And the alignment will be center. So I think this should be enough. So now, whenever you need to draw a text, you need the XY coordinates. So to get the XY coordinates, I think I will use a grid system. With the grid system, what we can do is. Um, so what, with a grid system, what we can do is easily fetch the coordinates and calculate it quickly. So that we can get coordinate for stats. So since we will be using a grid system, I will need an XY coordinate. And sometimes what happens is we need to offset some value. So I will use an offset x that will default to zero and offset y that default to zero. So in case we need to offset the coordinates by some amount, we'll use these two variables. We need to define some starting origin. So in this image, X is this direction and Y is this direction with zero, zero being here. So let's start at mm, maybe hundred, hundred is equal to mm, Original x is equal to zero. Origin y is equal to zero. We'll start at hundred and hundred, I think. So now, depending on the x y, the coordinates will be original x with an offset of x. But we need to define the spacing between the rows and the columns as well. Let's see x gap is equal to 100 and the y gap is equal to 100. We will change these amounts if we think it, they are not working correctly. So it will be x into x gap plus the offset if you need and original y plus y into y gap plus offset of y. So what this will do is if we pass the zero zero as x y, they will return the uh, first row and column in the grid. If we pass in zero one, it will pass the second first row second column or something like that. When I start writing, you will understand it more. For example, if I write self dot draw self dot write text, and we are going to get the coordinates zero comma zero for it. We don't need to offset it anyway, and we will write the text test. 
font we still don't have any font okay let's define the fonts first oh i don't think we need fonts right now let's see what happens if we do this only and that only one we do okay that's nice i dot writes stats let's pass some i don't think we need to pass any stats right now but let's pass some dummy data we will improve it later font okay font is required let's keep font as none right now that uses the default font we'll define the fonts and everything later so now the outdoor jpg looks like this okay so see this is 100 comma 100 hmm i think you're giving me too much credit all right it already has been an hour i think i'll increase my speed a bit let me copy paste some fonts in this directory first mm -hmm. I have selected two fonts for the project. I will use them. Okay. You will see I've created a font directly with two fonts here. I go downloaded them from Google Fonts. We'll use them in this project. So I think there's a the first font is called Jura. The image font dot true type is a true type font. Okay. Font that Jura dash regular. And I think I can write its default size as well. Let's start with fifty. Similarly, we have got font dot column image font dot true type fonts f column regular dot ppm and let's keep its default size as 50 as well now we have got two fonts now let's start writing the stats okay so the first thing we'll be doing is image generator dot write stats so we fit bit get base data test data best comma lifetime is equal to it is done get life let's see if this works okay comma best comma Hmm. I don't think I should be calling it during D when I'm making this. I don't want to overload the API right now. So what I will do is print it out and hard code it for right now. It should print out the data I think. So I will print out the data and hard code it for right now. So this is our today. Mm, this is our best. And this is our life. So we will pass in this. And we are let's save it okay so we need to write stats so we have got today's best and lifetime data so the today data has calories distance steps so let's write the calories distance steps first mm. calories distance first of all we write the day cell dot write x 
get coordinates in zero zero we will write today and we will write in font column let's say and let's see how this looks python main dot py attempted to a little bit no parent packages So this will be fit bit dot fit bit API and this will be email dot email we are not open the source if I think I misspelled something somewhere. Font slash Jura dash regular dot TTF that is font column dash regular dot TTF. This is fine. Okay, this T head. So it worked, and this is how the today looks. I think it's a bit big, but we can change that later on. Now, this is in the first one column. The next column we will write uh, let's start with um the distance maybe or oh, the steps let's write the steps for step dot write text get coordinates starts in the zero comma one steps today's step and one it is not iterable okay so i need to make sure this is always a string and okay so no i want it in the next so then next x okay we need to adjust the spacing a little bit so the x gap will be 120 this looks a bit better. Mm, after that, we will write the distance. Self dot. Let's get in the second column. We will write today's distance. In the font, and we will write the calories after that. Calories is the next one. Uh, okay, so this is working nicely, but I think the text is a bit too big. Okay, let's reduce the size to 40. This is fine. This is much better. I think I need to write km after this. Distance plus km and calories after this. Okay, can't convert. Now we have got okay, we need to increase the distance a bit more. Let's increase it to 100 and then see how it looks like. Mm. Okay, I think I messed up something. This is much better, but I think it's too much. Mm. Yes, this is. Fine, I think. 
Mm, after that, we'll write the best and then the lifetime, I suppose. So this will be in the next row called best. Heather Mead 11, cost language. Mm, I'm using Python right now. So I think the Y gap is too much. We reduce the Y gap to let's say 70. If this works. So in best as well, you'll write here for the stats. It will be in 1, 1 now. Structure of the best data. Let's so the best has steps, state, and value. Hmm, I think this is where I will use the offset that I offset argument that I created. So keep it here for reference. I hope you can see this correctly. I mean, there is a font as well. I don't know how it's looking in the stream. So it will be. Best steps value. Why is this not working? Undominated expression F string missing close. Okay, oh, so best steps value. Okay. So since it's giving the date as well, I need I think I'd like to write the date somewhere below this. Let me copy paste. It will be in the same column, but there will be an offset. I think there will be an Y offset of let's say um, 40 pixels. Offset Y is equal to 40. And this will be the date. So I think I'll need to reduce the size and format it a little bit. Hmm. Changing the size on variant size equal to let's define some size first. Uh, stats title size equal to 40. Stats subtitle size equal to 50. This way we can change it quickly if we need to and the size there will be let's see how it looks now mm, a bit better but i don't like this format i will convert it to something like august 12th 2022 something like that for that i will need the daytime maybe again from daytime for date time as dt so mm, okay we need to convert this date into dt dot st rp time this is a date string and the format is percent y percent m dash percent b and i want it in i need to use the reference we are at time so i want the month first uh, percent b then percent d then the air percent y. Hopefully this works. Yes, much better. I reduce the font a bit. That's 18. Maybe. And the y gap and offset. I will offset it a bit less. 
so now we have it uh, okay it's much better but i need to have offset it by it to make it look good yes i think this is good we have the best as well okay best Mm. So we have got the best steps now. I can get the best distance as the same thing. Okay, let's copy the value. It will be in the second column now, and it will be the distance. Okay, but distance knee, I need to came in front of distance. And with the image out of GPG. Yeah, I think I wrote something. Maybe one and one, and this will be two and two. Okay, this is much better. I think I will round the distance as well. So this is the distance. Let's round it up to 2dx. So that it looks good. I've got five viewers right now. And use some auto reloading VS extension. So I think I've got the auto save on. If I keep it. Here like this. Hopefully this is reloaded automatically. Yes, this works. But I don't I don't like want to write it like this. I don't want to see the whole code. This can also work. I'm writing Python main dot five many times. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, extensions Python reload on save or something. Do you know any extension that does that? Auto save on Python. Let me know if there's on. Okay, so there's a run command and a file is saved. Maybe this will work. I think this will take some time to configure. Maybe in the next stream I will do something like that. So we have the best distance and steps what else do we have from fitbit and then you have a lifetime steps and distance okay life and steps and distance that means it's not right text lifetime But I get caught for this word trap. Yes, I think word trap should be turned on already. Okay, this works. Yeah. So this will be row three and zero, I suppose. No, this will be row x zero and y three. And then we'll do get coordinates. Uh, x1 and y3 it will have the lifetime best so lifetime steps okay lifetime steps let's see how this is working okay i messed up something oh okay Live server works with HTML. I don't know. So we have got the lifetime in the why is the gap so big? If zero, okay, so this needs to be a second. Okay, yes, we are on the zero indexes now. This is much better. We have the lifetime steps, and now I want the lifetime distance. Mm. 
we have a lifetime distance now as well okay this is looking good this is looking much better mm, but there are some slight changes that i want to do for example today best in lifetime i need to make them right aligned so this is today let's see align right and middle this works or not anything i think best is it align or anchor it's an anchor align works for center and left better let's anchor okay so anchor move it there align right let's see if it works with okay so this won't work i think i will need to use the anchor property only anchor rm But I need to offset their offset their x by here and it is the best go best 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 here and lifetime offset x by let's say 20 Yes, this looks much better. Today this I think a bit more upset. The yeah, windy should be good. Yes, this looking much better. Hmm. I think the calories looking odd. So I think I have to remove the calories. I don't need them necessarily. Yes, this looks much better. They should be a bit more X facing to no, ten. Okay. So this is working. Now what else? What other data do we have? So we use our today's data and we use our lifetime stats. Now we'll use our get activities. Get activities it turns in array. Okay. Let's print it out first so that we can hard code. This is what it looks like. Okay. In dot five activities and we will write image generated dot write activities and pass activities here yeah. this is not a function yet but we can create it define write activities and we'll have self and activities as its argument hmm. activities is an array so we'll need to iterate over them Okay, so I will create another grid function, but for activities this time, activities, the y value for this will be, um, I think near 250, 250 will be the middle point, and then we will adjust it later on. Then we have the right activities function, since activities in array will iterate over them. Mm, for i comma activity enumerate activities i think i will need the i variable for using this grid function what three was right now
Okay, for I comma activity. Let's start by printing something simple. Let's see activity name. Let's start by printing the activity name first. So we'll do self dot draw self dot write text. Get coordinate activities. The x will be zero and the y means the row so the row will be i. So zero will be the first row and the second row and so on. And activity name with the activity name in font. Let's see how this works. And yes, it's a small n. Okay, so we got the text, but I think I will write it a bit smaller. It's too big for this. So it will be. Activities title activities is font zero font activity activity size Stacks on here and stacks on column so that we can use activity on Euro is equal to activity size and activity on column is equal to. Activity. So all these are broken now. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is much better. We will reduce the Y for this. Y gap will accept T and we'll move the origin a bit below. This is better, we'll increase the gap a bit 40. Okay, let's see 40 works. We've got walk. Now what else does the activity show us? I think there should be a date. This is a date from the start time. There is a duration and there is a number of calories burnt. Okay. So let's print the date first. Date will be equal to hmm, activity start time but the format of the start time is the ISO format I think so we will do dt from ISO format activity dot time and we will print it in same format like we did here font size is too small I think it should be fine in the header when in the header we can change it later on. Uh, STRF. So we'll do. I don't think I need the air because even the recent exercise of the air is not needed. We'll just use the day and the month and then in the hour, minute, and seconds. Hour, minute, second is percent H percent. I think percent H percent M percent S. We need the second one. This should be enough, and then you we'll write the, the first column. Okay. This works, but we will use the font euro for the new numbers. 
So the walk, walk, walk. Thirteen hours, twelve hours, twelve hours. Yes, this works fine. Then I think we have uh, what else do we have? There's a duration. We will have the duration and the calories. Yeah. In this second one, it will be activity duration. Okay, so I think this is in milliseconds or seconds. I need to convert it into hours and minutes. There's a library called Time Delta or something like that. I'm switching. I'm switching. Okay. From date time into time delta. Yes, as TD. Duration is equal to TD. Let's try seconds first. I think it's seconds maybe. Then if I print it directly, I think this should work. Okay, it did not work. I don't know why. Maybe this will work. The string duration. Other I think this should work. I think. Okay, so fourteen hours. No, I did not walk for fourteen hours. So this is definitely milliseconds. Millisecond is not defined. Yes, this makes more sense. So, zero hours twenty three minutes fifty three seconds. Yes, that will probably be the walk I did. So this is also okay. Now I need to add the calories. Calories should be simple enough. You know? Act. Activity. Calories. The third column. Okay, so I suppose the gap is a bit too big, but it's only for the last column. So we will reduce it using the offset. Offset x minus twenty. This fifty. Mm. I think this is much better. What do you guys think? Let me see if I get like some more people in the Discord. Looks nice in uniform gaps. Yes, that's why I use the grid system. Uh, it helps create a uniform gaps and the uniform design very quickly. I'll post an image of the live on the Discord server and see if more people come. Uh, pictures. Screenshot from the live. Okay. So. 
what else do we need to add? Let's see the tasks. So I've got the image generation. I think I used all the data I could. Now I can upload it to Twitter. I, think I should get the latest followers as well. I'll need to use the Twitter API for that. Docker Collision, which why it isn't that visible. Okay. Yes, we can do that. Uh, I've created a wrapper for the exact reason for this exact reason. If we do something like doo -doo 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 -doo, let's see how dark that is. Yep, this looks nice, much nice, I would say. Hmm. Now let's work on the Twitter API. I think. I think I will open my old Twitter header code so that mm, this will work really quickly. Do you guys want me to show you how to create a Twitter app as well? Because it will take some time. I already have all that, all that set up. I'm not sure if you want to see that or not. So to use a Twitter API, I will use a library called VP. That makes it very easy to access the Twitter stuff. And we'll create another file for the Twitter API. Twitter.py import VP. And hmm, Twitter app on the next three. Oh, I don't think I will. Hmm. I think I'll skip creating the Twitter app button directly use the client ID and stuff that I already have. So to use the Twitter API, you need four things. The access token, the access token secret, the client, the consumer key and the consumer key secret. Let me blur the screen for a moment and I will paste them in my environment files and close it. So, yep. So I have got the environment environment variable set up. Now I just need to load them here as well. So import load to dot env dot env dot load. Hmm. So let's start by creating. API. You create a function that would get the API. What this will do is we create an self.api. I don't need to create, I will do all of this in the constructor itself self.api is equal to ep dot authenticate which dot api what mm. this is a function auth is equal to what does this need is a consumer key and consumer secret i think i can pass all four things here as well Consumer key is OS dot get env consumer key. Not important OS here. And then there is consumer secret OS dot get env consumer secret. Access token is equal to OS dot get env access token and then there is access token secret OS dot get env access token secret should work and then self dot api is equal to auth vp dot api and it needs the auth variable okay so now we have got the api set up let's 
maybe let's go to maybe is equal to Twitter API T dot API get me is there get me function yeah, dot me it used to be fucking called me that printed the information about the login user I don't know what it's called now get friend get list get retweet get get user okay Let's print this. Let's see if the code is working. Print the User not found. Mm, that is bad. I don't know why it did not work. Consumer keys. Okay, consumer. Secret this token is okay. Access to a secret is also okay. Hmm. Maybe let me try and check if I'm using the correct keys. It is short in the So I think this is not working for some reason. Let me try something else. I will remove these two variables from here and add them on one. E and secret. See this one. That's really weird. Should I work? Let me try something. Yes. So this is working. So I think there's something wrong with that. I should open the PP documentation for this. So what is wrong with that function? PP API reference mm. authentication reference. So API. So in the API, there should be a me. Post get user get account settings. So let's see if I can get the latest followers. Get followers. If this works, then we don't have to worry about anything. so this worked i think these are my latest followers so okay i think the api is working correctly we don't need to worry about it that much mm -hmm. okay so let's keep working on this get followers i will get a function that will fetch latest let's say five followers and get the images. I only need the image, I think. Hmm. Help dot API dot get followers, and I will need the five. And it should be a parameter called it skips status if I'm not wrong. Skips status is equal to. And 
I will Let's see what the data looks like. Hmm. So yes, so I got the followers. There are five followers. So I need the image. I don't need the ID. I don't need the name. I need the profile image URL with the HTTPS. Okay. So I need. Here it done. Follower profile image. Your voice is echoing. Hello. How much? I don't think I changed any setting. Maybe it will fix itself. Your Twitter has a turned black. And it was okay. So the header would have. My Twitter has a turned black. That's weird. No, I think it's working correctly. When you have HTTPS for followers, followers, I will be turning that. So now in the main dot pi. Voice is still echoing. I have no idea how to fix that. Mm. Hello, hello. Let me see if this helps. Hello. Hell. It does add echo cancellation. I don't think I have anything that can cancel my echo. Is it really that bad? Hello. Hell. Oh. You tell me it's still bad. Just mm. disconnect Discord. Just disconnect Discord. We have Discord connected somewhere. So let me see if closing Discord helps. I have disconnected the Discord. Let's see if it's working now. Hello, 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 hello. Is it working now? I have disconnected the Discord. Let me focus on this first. Second, hey, fine. Still same. I think it's maybe only for you. Because I think Levi CTI said you can hear me fine. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so now I've got the array of URLs I need. I will need to add them to the image let's copy this data and maybe is equal to this so now in the image and red i need to write a function draw followers So 
for each image image in images i need to draw them to sell first of all i need to get that image for each specify it for the url in images image is equal to image dot open i want to buy this i to download the image i need to use the io library that will convert the data i get from requests request 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 the size 100 by 100 and let's paste it on the image cell dot image dot paste um let's see for testing we can paste it anywhere let's do 750 comma 150 or something mm, in the main dot i will write image Generated or draw followers and pass the images. A byte like object is by not response. Okay, so I think I was wrong, I had the wrong idea here. So request dot get will get bytes like object. I need to convert it into a oh yes, request get gets a response. I need to convert it into bytes into content. that worked let's see okay so this is the image 100 by 100 is a too big let's try 50 by 50 i think this should work so now i have the image but okay i'm pasting all of them in the same place let's take it to the top right somewhere so the top should be let's say x will be mm, so if each image is 50 pixels wide and the total width is 1500 i will want need a gap of let's say 50 pixels from the left first 100 it's the two, 250 pixels plus 150 Let's start at 1100, that is 400 pixels from the right. Okay, and from the top, let's say 40 pixels on the top. Yeah, I think this is the correct place. But now I need to calculate it for the different images. Again, I will need to do I comma URL enumerate images. And this is the starting question so i will add i into let's say if each image is 50 pixels wide 60 this will work yeah that worked so i got one two three point five by four i like it we'll see if any uploading okay i'm almost done i've got the latest followers here i'll write some text followers here and then upload it in my twitter I think it will take me 10 minutes to finish this. Okay, goodbye. Epic. Self.draw. Self.write x. If I'm writing that on 1100, let's write on 940. Text in the latest followers font will be maybe the stats font is best. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I need to bring it a bit 
lowest may be like 100. That's too low. 50. 70. Yep, that works. Maybe a bit to the right. Um, yeah, this looks nice. I think I think I'm done. There's one thing that's disturbing me that I need to show that these are the steps and these are the distance. I will add some sort of icon here and here, I suppose. I suppose. Let's try that out. I'm trying to will be the x no, the y will be minus one i don't need an offset steps see how this works something like that but i don't need an anchor yep that works and this will be the distance in the second column yes that looks good but i think i will use some sort of icons here i have an icon font font awesome that i will use for this let's see where did that go awesome How many there are three years? I think I'm almost done. I've added a new font. It is the font awesome font that would F A font is equal to image font dot Let's try this. Let's see which I can use you font awesome. Steps. This looks good. I will copy it. And where am I writing the steps? Instead of stats on the map, I will be using. Should I name it? I think on autos. Yep, that works. Similarly, for distance, no location, this will work. Yeah, this looks nice. I don't think any other viewers will like to comment on this. Okay, what else do I need to do? I will write some sort of text at the bottom as well. I'll do it here only. Self dot write text. What do I need to write? X Y. It will be in the middle. So the middle text is seven fifty, I suppose. And Y will be, let's say, 480. Let's header auto generated. generated. Check pin tweet for details. Let's see how that looks. Uh, it looks I need to change the color for this. Oh, 
okay so it's raining and i had just had a power outage but i think you got the idea what i'm trying to do so i will just close this i don't need to do this right now what i will just do is show you how to load this pretty quickly because i need to stop the stream Oh, in the Twitter API, do I have it? Okay, let me see. Twitter is equal to Twitter API. What we'll do is for Twitter dot API dot update profile banner, and it is called out dot APT. Now, when I call, do I have it open here? Yes. So now, when I call Python main dot py. No print at is Twitter. It will be Twitter dot Twitter API. So now when I run main dot py, it should update my banner here. If I refresh it, you'll see I will get the new banner. I think I'll need to do some changes later on, but you get the idea. I think I will be stopping the stream because I just had a power outage and I need to shut down the computer. Goodbye.